Hi guys, you feeling lucky today? Well, you should be because we surely hit a jackpot with planet Earth. Beautiful skies, fascinating waters, rolling hills everywhere. I mean, this place is nice. But it didn't just wake up like this. In fact, Earth was a real hell and it took some serious time to transform this place into a home. Four billion years worth of evolution to make it a home. So what is wrong with the way things are now? As the latest life form, we, the humans, have been around for only 500,000 years. This is one 8,000th from the Big Bang until now. And sure, we have grown intelligent enough to redefine the way we live and communicate and transport, but we haven't been exactly delicate pursuing this progress and altered <coughs> convenience. For the last 100 years, we have almost exhausted the natural resources that our planet has created for the past four billion years. We have generated billions of tons of waste which have entered our nature and our oceans. Our human activity has resulted in so many emissions that we have shifted the patterns of climate, rendering hundreds of incredible species to go extinct. And this is only for the last 100 years. Now, we can't actually look beyond year 2050. This is 30 years from now, meaning most of us would be alive to see the second worst thing to electing Donald Trump, namely the estimated collapse of the world. And with this reality in mind, surprisingly, fashion is our planet's second biggest polluter. Now, I'm not here to point fingers at fast fashion or at us, the end consumers. The world has always had problems, just like us, and I believe the ones that were solved were the ones we genuinely understood in a perspective that made sense for us and that made it straightforward for us to get to the root cause so we can look at the solutions that actually solve for this root cause. Now, you'll find out I'm a facts person. I see my co-founder here, she's nodding her head, and my love for facts derives from my genuine passion for science and technology. And this is the lens through which I have been looking at the problem and gotten to the root cause. And the root cause with fashion is not necessarily that we consume too much, but it is that we have been using the wrong materials all along. Materials that consume a lot of resources and at the same time cause a lot of pollution. And specifically that we do not reuse those uh, materials. So the root problem with fashion is that it is not circular. And to fix for circularity, we need to all engage into this circle of life. And since I don't see anyone naked here today, all of us have to be part of this solution. And we need to first resonate with the problem so that you care. And next, we have to be excited by the solutions. Solutions that, however, do not trade off on the comfort we have already managed to establish with fashion, namely the incredible diversity of clothing, the good prices, and the great design as well, and the quality of it. So with this, I'm standing here with the single mission of telling the story of fashion's impact in a way that will make you care, and share the solutions that look towards nature's incredible design and system genius, perfected over billions of years, that offers a way for us to make fashion circular and actually change the way we produce, consume, and dispose, so that we do not only not kill our planet, but actually help it thrive. So, fashion is our planet's second biggest polluter. Let's break this down. I want you all to imagine a simple white cotton t-shirt you have it? Now make an educated guess on how many liters of water did it take to produce this simple t-shirt? 10? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, <laughs> a lot of solutions. One single t-shirt takes 2,700 liters of water to be produced. Now, if I had to fill this stage with this much water, this would be five meters high, which is three times my height well, without high heels. Or <laughs> if I had to drink it, given that I drink uh, 1.5 liters of water a day, it would take me 4.9 years to drink this water. Now, scale this to all of us in this room, to everyone in our country, in the continent, to the world. We consume two billion t-shirts every single year, while in fact over a billion people do not even have access to safe water. And 
beyond using a lot of water, cotton also uses a lot of chemicals and pesticides such as aldicarb, a drop of which can kill a human. Now we talk about pesticides in our vegetables and cosmetics, but we don't talk about them when it comes to our clothing, when in fact cotton is also the second biggest user of pesticides. Pesticide-treated textiles result in uh, our nerve cells not being able to communicate with each other. They destroy our immune system. They even interfere with our biochemistry to uh, cause depression. So it's like smoking 20 years ago when no one, when no one told us smoking was bad, just like right now, no one is telling us that um, wearing pesticide-treated textiles is bad for us. Now, aren't we intelligent enough to come up with something else that doesn't require tons of water and uh, pesticides? Sure, <laughs> we've created this, it's called polyester, and two-thirds of our clothes are made of polyester. And polyester, just like plastic, is great. Uh, it doesn't require water or pesticides, it's very low cost, it can take multiple forms and shapes, it lasts forever, literally. <laughs> The problem with polyester, however, is that every single time we wash it, it releases 700,000 micro, uh, plastic microfibers, which we cannot filter. So they enter our water systems and inadvertently come back to us. Last week, I read a survey that currently we're estimated to ingest one credit card worth of plastic a week. And in case you didn't know, eating that much plastic is a really bad idea. One of the most fascinating facts for me, however, was the fact that the production of textiles annually emits more CO2 than all flight and maritime transportations combined. And this is without the clothing even being shipped to us. Um, so far we have just produced a textile, now we have to color it. 40% of all colorants used by status quo fashion contain organically bound chlorine, which is a known carcinogen, or in plain words, cancer. Once that uh, we have colored those textiles in the color baths, the same water full of carcinogens is going back into our water systems, again, inadverted, inadvertently getting back to us. So we have produced a textile, we have colored it, now we can buy it. We actually buy five times more than what our parents would buy. Yet how many of you have clothes that's five times bigger? I don't. Actually, if we try to gather in one pile all of the textiles and clothing that rest at landfills right now, we will get a pile bigger than Mount Everest. What happens with those clothing? Some of them get burned, releasing more CO2, or they end up dissolving back into our nature, releasing all of those nasty chemicals and plastics back. And I can talk with days about everything that is wrong with the fashion industry, both environmentally and ethically as well. But as I mentioned, the problem is not something that I'm fascinated with, it's just something that makes me curious to get to the root cause. And so that we can move on to the really exciting part, which is the solutions. I mentioned I'm a huge fan of science and technology, so I would love to show you a few of the examples that offer solutions for a circular fashion. Let's start with the textiles. Food crop waste is highly regenerative, it's low cost, and it's a very scalable biomaterial. Just banana leaves, rice, sugar cane, pineapple leaves give us more than 250 million tons of fiber, which is already 2.5 times more the global fiber demand. Companies like Circular Systems is transforming this food crop waste into valuable fiber, yarn, and textile, which can easily substitute for cotton and for polyester. Algaes are fantastic as well. They grow abundantly, they don't require land, they don't require pesticides, and what is more importantly, they're really rich into antioxidants, vitamins, and other nut nutrients, which can actually be good for our skin. So instead of wearing pesticide-treated textiles, which destroy our immune system and prevent our nerve cells from communicating, we could actually be wearing textiles that make us healthier. Alga Life is one of the companies which is leveraging on algae to derive not just textiles, which save a lot of water and chemicals, but they can also offer uh, an infinite amount of pigments. So they also solve for the coloring problem as well. One of my personal favorites is the Streptomyces CD color. It is a strain of bacteria found in the soil, which can range from blue to pink and purple, depending on its acidity level. 
Each colony produces pigment around its territory and it can color a t-shirt with only 200 milliliters of water, which is fascinating. What is also great about Streptomyces CD color is that using it into a systematic way could actually help us derive an organic pattern, a uniform dye, even a graphic print without a single chemical. Now, I know you like your shoes and bags made from leather as well, and Vitro Labs have managed to produce real leather, not vegan, not synthetic, real leather from a single biopsy, from a healthy, happy cow. Cells, even though this is the smallest particle which makes us, are already brilliant enough to know exactly what to do once you put them in the right environment. Meaning we can grow an infinite amount of leather only using this single biopsy without hurting even one animal. Now, we can already create textile and color the textile with 100% less resources and materials. So what is still holding us back? How we put the clothing together and how we dispose them also plays a huge part into closing the loop of the fashion industry. And two of my favorite jeans brands uh, use recycled denim, which actually requires a lot of resources, but if they use the recycled one, it spares 95% of that. So why don't all companies do this, even though 85% of our clothing is recyclable? This here, thank you. This is a recycling left out, and zippers and buttons make it very hard for garment recycling, as the removal of such details makes the process very um, time-consuming, manual, and costly. So this is a big part of why we do not recycle too much. But what if we had a threat that could dissolve under specific conditions, and we this leave the piece in fragmented particles ready to be dissolved. And actually, Resurtex is doing exactly this. But once you put the product in under high temperature, the threads are dissolving, leaving the piece, any piece, shoes, clothing, ready to be recycled. Now, these are just a few of the hundreds of groundbreaking solutions that offer a way for us to transition towards a, healthy in, a healthier industry. And having grown up in Hong Kong and in Japan, one of the most powerful th things I took with me was the power of collectivism, the power of pooled knowledge, of combined resources, of bigger reach. For me, it was as clear as a day that a problem this big on every single level of the value chain would only be solved through an intricate collaboration between groundbreaking technologies, bold brands, and us, the end consumers. And this is exactly what we did. My team and I built Cool and Conscious, our planet's first platform for circular fashion, uniting groundbreaking sourcing companies, the boldest fashion brands, and us, the end consumers. Going Conscious works as a two-fold platform. On the one hand, we look for the most innovative material science, dyeing, designing companies. And on the second hand, we look for the boldest fashion brands, which were genuinely found with the mission to make fashion that is uh, sustainable, ethical, circular, and cool. <laughs> Today we have more than 200 brands and through aggregating them into one place, we don't only enable them to source at a better scale, better materials, so altogether improving the circularity and driving prices down, but we also make it easy for you and me, the end customers, to shop sustainable fashion in a more seamless way. By the way, a lot of people think that sustainable fashion is ugly, crafty and boring, so let me break that stereotype down. Sustainable fashion is beautiful, diverse, and of exceptional quality. Every single piece comes with its own history and origin. For example, the textile for each piece made by Maisha Concept, for example, is led to bleach naturally under the African sun. Next, it is delicately block printed by hand with dyes derived from flowers and plants. Afterwards, it is assembled by a family which has been carrying these traditions for decades. Wearing such a piece is never just an outfit. Yes, it has spared thousands of liters of water and pesticides and chemicals, but it does touch you beyond the superficial. It connects you to places and people around the world that you have never seen and that you have never been to. It actually creates value to what you wear, not just something that you would buy and throw away. You would actually care for it. It creates this delicate balance between emotional attachment and graceful degradation so that one day this piece can go back into the soil, enriching it with its natural fibers, colors, and history. 
So yes, we sure hit a jackpot with planet Earth. Beautiful skies, majestic waters, fascinating hills everywhere. But planet once upon a time was a real hell, just like our fashion industry is right now. We do not have billions of years to fix the fashion industry, but we do have the billions of years worth of experience, models, and processes in nature that we can look to and adopt to make our fashion circular. I do believe that knowledge is the key to caring and that once we care, it is hard not to act. Once we act, change happens. And more than ever, our world needs this change. So now that you understand the problem in its core, I hope you would carry on caring. But more importantly, now that you know the groundbreaking solutions that can help make our world better, you would leave today caring to act. And once you act, know that you have played your part into shifting the trajectory of our world so that the next and the next and the next generations also hit the jackpot with planet Earth. So let's save the planet in style together. Thank you. <laughs>